In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create beautiful topographic maps of the entire world completely for free using Canva and some other tools. I got the idea for this video from this viewer who was struggling with creating maps of national parks, and I thought that would be such a cool concept if we could find a way to do it without the need to pay for expensive software or go through a super complicated process. And then another viewer left this comment on my last video about maps, asking if there's a way to include a running route into the maps. And that's where everything clicked. What if we could create maps of beautiful natural landscapes from around the world and include our own paths across those places? How awesome would it be if you could go on a family road trip and then create a poster showing the route you took or the hiking trails you visited? It goes without saying that you could start your own business selling products like these and potentially make an income from your hiking or traveling passion. So I'm going to show you how to create beautiful, commercially viable, copyright-free topographic maps of the entire planet. Trust me, by the end of this video, you won't believe the results you'll be able to achieve. The method you're about to learn took a crazy amount of testing and research and you won't find it anywhere else on YouTube. So if you do appreciate this kind of content, please give the video a like, drop a comment down below and subscribe to the channel. It's completely free and it really helps me keep creating content like this for you guys. So thank you so much and now let's get into it. So this is a super easy three-step process and as usual, I try to make it as simple as possible for you. And also, it's kind of a fun process too. So step number one is to source the topographic map data. For that, we're going to be using a great platform called Open Topography. This is a website that basically lets you download topographic information from the Earth's surface. So go to the website and on your top right hand side, go into data and click find data map. This map basically shows you all the data sources you can access using this platform. You can see how they overlap in the map and on the top right hand side, you can see what those sources are. So for the purpose of creating high quality topographic maps, we're going to be using the global and regional DEMs. These are digital elevation models from around the world. So we can uncheck the other sources and this will also make our map easier to read. Now, first, we want to zoom into the area that we want to create a map of. For this example, I want to go back to the Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming. I was just there a couple of months ago with my family and we absolutely loved it. If you haven't been there yet, I cannot recommend it enough. It is a gorgeous place very close to Yellowstone, so you can definitely hit them both in the same trip. So, zoom into about 10 or 20 kilometers in the scale. You can find the scale in the bottom left corner, and now you simply want to select the region that you want to download. To do that, you want to first click on this blue button on the top left corner and that will activate the drag and zoom selection tool. So just click and drag your mouse across your area of interest and there we go. The website will immediately display all the data sources available for that specific sector. So just click on global and regional DEM and look for the Copernicus Global Digital Elevation Model. Within it, you'll find two options, a 90 meter and a 30 meter data. You want to choose the Copernicus 30 meter data and as soon as you do, you'll get a very educational overview of what this data source is and how it was generated. I definitely recommend you read this, it's actually quite interesting. And if we scroll down, we'll find the settings section. So first we'll see the coordinates, we'll just leave that as it is. Then we have an option to select the output format. Now in case it's not selected by default, we want to go with GeoTIFF. Number three is layer types. In case we have more than one option, we'll select digital surface model. And number four is raster visualization. Just choose Hillshade and keep these settings as they are. So finally, you want to enter your email and click submit. The website will then take a couple of seconds to extract the topographic data you requested, you can click here to download it and you are set. So that's it. As you can see, there's nothing really complicated about this step. You can repeat these exact same steps for whatever part of the world you want to download. So step number two is transform this data into a beautiful contour map that we can import into Canva. And to do that, we're going to be using an awesome free open source tool called QGIS. So go to their website and download and install the software. So launch the software and now you're probably thinking the same thing I did the first time. This must be alien technology. But it's not and I'll show you just how easy it is to use for this purpose. So extract the file you just downloaded and you'll get this, a single .tif file. So just drag and drop it into QGIS and there you go, a picture of an alien brain. <laughs> just kidding. So this is basically a raw elevation grid. Every single pixel in this image holds an elevation value. So to transform this into this, we're going to tell the software to trace contour lines across this elevation map. That basically means slicing the terrain every 100 meters of elevation and then showing us the outline of those slices. So this turns our weird alien looking image into a vector image with smooth lines that we can export to Canva, Illustrator or Kittle. Now I know all of this sounds a bit intimidating at first, but it's actually extremely easy to do. So go to your left hand side menu and select your image layer. It should be named something like Output HH. Next, go to the top menu into Raster Extraction and select Contour. Okay, so this is the fun part. Here we tell QGIS how it should slice our map. By default, the slicing interval is 
set to 10. This means that the map is going to be sliced horizontally every 10 meters of elevation. For a landscape like ours, which contains rugged mountains and high peaks, that will result in a very messy map. As a general rule, the more flat the landscape, the lower interval you want to use. And the more mountains, the bigger this number should be. For a place like this, something between 50 and 100 meters will work perfectly. If you plan to do an entire country or state, then somewhere between 100 and 200 meters will give you the cleanest results. So for Idaho, Wyoming and the surrounding national parks, 100 is the sweet spot. Leave the rest of the settings as they are and now click run. Let it work its magic and there we go. Now if you go to your left hand side again, you'll see that there's a new layer named contours. So just uncheck the image layer and there you go. This is your contour map and it looks insanely detailed. You can clearly appreciate where the peaks and valleys of the area are located. This is where Jackson stands and this right here is the Jackson Lake and the Jenny Lake over here. Now you can easily change the colors of these lines to have your map look exactly the way you want it. If you go to your left hand side again and double click on your contours layer, you can navigate to symbology. Here you can change the color of the lines as well as the width and even the style. So I'm going to do black lines and 0.25 width. We hit OK and there we go. Now there is one final thing I like to do before exporting this image, but it is completely optional. And that is to set it to the proper projection. As I mentioned on my last video about maps, there are multiple different types of map projections out there. And what we are all familiar with, it's what's called the wet mercator projection, which is the classic Google Maps look. But our map is by default in what's called the plate carré projection, which looks a bit wider. So to change that, just go to the bottom right corner and you'll see this little box that reads EPSG 4326. It's a little hard to see sometimes, but that's basically alien for plate carré projection. Just click there and in this pop-up window, type 3857 in the filter box. Down here in the coordinate reference system, you should be able to see the Mercator projection. Select it and click OK. There you go, your map now looks uh, normal. If we compare this with Google Maps, you'll see what I mean. So that was literally the hardest part of this entire process. Now to export this map into an image that you can easily import into Canva, simply go to the top menu once again into Project Import Export and choose Export Map to Image. Now make sure to change the resolution to 300 dpi and then click where it says Draw on Canvas. Select the area of the map that you want to export and click Save. Choose a folder destination and a name for your map and make sure to end it with .png to ensure it exports as a PNG image. That's it. Now the third and last step is to customize this map in Canva. And right after, I'll show you how to add your own custom hiking trail or road trip to this map. So go to Canva, create a new project, we'll create a poster in this case, and then simply drag and drop the image you just exported. That's it. You can now further crop your map, maybe change the colors by applying a filter, and you can of course add some text and some coordinates to turn this into a proper poster. You can also add some graphic elements to give it a more personalized look, maybe a pin to reference a special place or some tags or labels to remember a visit or event. And now for the best part, how do we import a hiking trail into this map? Well, that is insanely simple and I'll show you exactly how to do it. So if you recorded your hiking activity using any GPS device or some app on your phone, you can export that trail as a GPX file. Most apps and devices allow you to do this. So for reference, I have this GPX file of the Teton Crest Trail, which I would love to do someday. Now to add it to your topographic map, all you need to do is simply drag and drop it into QGIS. This pop-up window will appear and you'll be presented with a list of items that are included in your file. So just select tracks and click add layers. That's it. You might not be able to instantly see it on the map because of the color, but if you go to your layers panel once again, you'll see that the trail layer has been added. So now you can double click on it and change the color and the width of the line to something like one. Hit OK and there you go. Your trail is now perfectly synced with your map and properly highlighted. So now we can export this map once again and import it right into Canva. It is as simple as that. Now the great thing about being able to import your trails or your trips into these maps is that it becomes something else. It's no longer just a map of the Grand Canyon for example, it's your path through it. You can turn your favorite hike into a piece of wall art. These become a way to carve your memories into the terrain and document your adventures in a beautiful way. So you now have the tools to create awesome maps of the entire world. And you can use these tools to start your own digital product business or your own print on demand store and sell these maps as posters, wallpapers, t-shirts and much more. In fact, there are multiple stores on Etsy making really good money with this product. This store, for example, has a great concept. It sells minimalist maps of famous trails from around the world. They have this really cool look, which is totally achievable with the tools we just learned how to use. And they have made over $250,000 in revenue with this very simple concept. You can absolutely replicate this business model and give it your own personal spin. For example, offering topographic maps with custom trails, including your customers' names and important dates. These kinds of products are evergreen bestsellers because 
because they carry a personal meaning, and that makes them way more appealing to potential customers. And by the way, in case you're wondering how you can present your art in this way using beautiful mockups like these ones, I have a dedicated video about it right here, so make sure to check it out. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Please let me know in the comments if you have any questions or any feedback. Of course, we haven't even scratched the surface of what's possible with these tools, but I'll be happy to create further products and videos on this topic if you guys are interested. Please don't forget to give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. That really helps push this content to more people and grow this community even further. You guys are the best. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week.